Hi, today we're gonna talk about OneMesh, TP-Link OneMesh. First, we're gonna see what it is, uh, how it works, how it can actually benefit our network, and then we're gonna set it up to make sure it's up and running. So, let's begin. OneMesh is the name of the TP-Link's whole home Wi-Fi system. Basically, the idea is if I already have a TP-Link wireless router, which supports OneMesh, for example, an Archer A7, and I need to extend the range of my Wi-Fi, instead of just buying a whole new wireless system, I can add one or more OneMesh nodes to my network, for example, TP-Link RE220 repeaters, to fix the problem. Now you might ask, uh, what exactly is the difference between using this as a repeater, which we talked about in the previous video, and as a one mesh node? That's actually a very good question and I'm really glad you asked. Well, as a repeater, its job is to connect to the primary wireless router and then rebroadcast its wireless networks. It is, however, my job to decide whether it should use the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, or maybe both of them. Again, it is my job to decide whether it should rebroadcast using the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, or maybe both radios. And if the names of the new Wi Fi's should be the same or different than the ones on the primary wireless router. Also, they could be from different brands and they're not actually very synchronized with each other. But in a one mesh system, they're actually all part of the same system. All the devices should be TP Link and all of them should support one mesh. So when I'm connecting the RE220 repeater to a one mesh system, it is actually going to connect to the primary wireless router using both radios. Only one of them is going to be used for the data transfer though, and it is something that we're going to talk about later. Now, it is going to broadcast exactly the same wireless networks as the primary wireless router. So one advantage of this system is centralized management. For example, if I need to change the Wi-Fi password, I don't need to log into each of these devices individually to do that. I can actually log into the wireless router, change the Wi-Fi password, and it will automatically apply it to the rest of them. Also because they're all part of the same system, now they're more synchronized with each other. This should help them to work together to improve some aspects of Wi-Fi, for example the roaming experience. That being said, there are actually two limitations that I need to know before setting up my one mesh system. Number one, I cannot connect my one mesh node with an ethernet cable to the wireless router. Basically, the backhaul could be only wireless. Number two, I can only use one wireless router in my one mesh system and only as the wireless router, not as a one mesh node. Basically, the node could be only one of the supported repeaters or power line adapters. I mean, I get it. This is how they design this system. But at the end of this video, I will tell you why I wish they hadn't designed it this way. Now, other companies, other vendors usually have their own mesh system, and each one might be uh, somewhat different from the other one. For example, Asus has the AI mesh system, which we already talked about it and put it to the test in other videos. Maybe like this video if you want me to make a video and compare one mesh with AI mesh. Tell you what, if this video gets 200 likes, I'll make that video. So as far as the connection between the nodes, what I had seen before in other mesh networks and mesh systems was like they would usually connect to each other by using both radios. However, they would only use one of them for data transfer. I mean the one that has better quality and better speed. Until I actually saw this animation on the one mesh website. So does that mean OneMesh actually uses both radios at the same time for data transfer? That is in fact the very question I asked the TP-Link support team. And they confirmed that only one of them, I mean the one that has better quality, will be used for data transfer. 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz, not both of them. Dear TP-Link, hi, if you're watching this video, I uh, just had a quick suggestion. Uh, maybe you want to reconsider using that animation in your website uh, because it's a little bit confusing. Um, just a suggestion though. Thank you and have a great day. Now it is time to set up our one mesh system. As you probably know by now, uh, the one mesh system that I'm gonna set up consists of a TP-Link Archer A7 and an RE220 repeater. I've already talked about and installed these devices in other videos. Link in the video description in case you wanna check them out. 
Now connecting the RE220 as a mesh node to the Archer A7 is not that much different from connecting it as a repeater. Basically first I'm gonna plug it in close to the wireless router and then connect my laptop to its default Wi-Fi which is TP-Link Extender. Then I'm gonna open a browser and enter its default IP address. Here I can choose a password for the user interface of the repeater. Now this is where I need to connect the repeater to the wireless networks of the primary wireless router. First 2.4 GHz and then 5 GHz. If you remember as a repeater I actually had the option to connect it to the wireless router using either of the radios or both of them. But if I want to connect it as a mesh node I need to make sure both of them are connected. And as you can see it didn't even ask me to select any names for the mesh nodes wireless networks because it is going to use exactly the same names and passwords as the primary wireless router. Now I'm pretty much done, I just need to put the one mesh node in its right location. Obviously it shouldn't be too far and it should still be within the range of the primary wireless router. Now if I connect my laptop to the Wi-Fi and log into the wireless router, I can see that there is a mesh device which is the RE220 and it is connected. I can also change its name or select one of these locations for it. Now if I go to the one mesh tab, I can see the RE220 and how many clients are connected to it. If I click on it, I can see the name, location, MAC address, signal strength and the current link speed for each of the frequencies. If I need to force it to leave one mesh, I can do it here, but it will still be connected as a repeater. I will also be able to join it back to the one mesh system. Now if I click this manage device, it will take me directly to the login page of the OneMesh node. And if I log in, I can see that it is successfully connected which is good. But I can no longer change these wireless settings because it is actually synchronized with the primary wireless router. I can and I will give it a static IP address because it will no longer change and I can remember exactly what it is. I can no longer use the high speed feature either, obviously because as a mesh node it would use both radios to connect to the primary wireless router. These are actually the features that we talked about in more details in the previous video. If I need to remove this node from the one mesh system, I can do it here as well. Alright, we did it. The One Mesh system is up and running and I've been using it for a couple of days now, mostly as a client breach. I mean, I connected my desktop computer to the One Mesh node with an Ethernet cable. And yes, even though you cannot connect it with an Ethernet cable to the wireless router, you can actually connect a wired device to it. But you know what? Um, the fact that I cannot use two wireless routers in a single One Mesh system is kind of disappointing to me. Um, let's say this is my wireless router and I've been using it for a few years. I've been really happy with it, but it is getting old and newer technology is out there. So I decide that I want to buy a new wireless router. You know what? I've been really happy with this brand. So why not stay loyal and try one of their newer models, right? Besides, they also introduced their mesh system. So I might as well go ahead and use the old one to create a whole home Wi-Fi system. No, you can't. What? See what happened here? That's why I said it was kind of disappointing. In the next video though, we're gonna put the one mesh system to the test and see how it does in action. So make sure you subscribe for that. But until then, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you liked it. Thumbs up if you did and share it if you think others might like it too. Thank you again and I will see you next time.